What's the deal, y'all? It's your boy Big Star Raw Sports here, man. Um, you know, all I can say is, man, it's going down tonight, man. We got Catino Mobley, um, legend, Philly area legend, man. Um, you know, played at Cardinal Doherty High School, uh, you know, prep school, Rhode Island, NBA, man. You know, he was around. He's a GOAT. He played with the GOATs, you know, so this is definitely going to be a classic, man. So um, just like last night, uh, what's up? What's up, big dog? I appreciate you, D1 Bound 34. I appreciate the love, man. That means a lot to me, man. You know, Legends Week is for everybody. Big Duke 24 is about to go down, man. It's, it's going down, man. I appreciate everybody's support, man. Um, uh, Cat's going to jump on in a second. Um, here we go. It's going down. I Say no more. Here we go. We got Cat in the building, the legend. What's up, bro? I'm blessed by the best, man. How you doing, man? What's good? What's, what's, what's going on on the west side, man? Uh, crazy. Just doing all this business. It's crazy over here right now. Got you, got you, got you. Hey, well, I just want to thank you so much for tuning in, man. Um, you know, Legends Week, you know, I appreciate your support for the series. Um, you know, thanks. I just want to thanks in advance just for, you know, giving me the opportunity to, to you know, pay homage to your legacy, to your career. Um, and, you know, two things I like to tell all the legends, you know, um, you know, before we before we chop it up. Um, you know, I just I thank you for the opportunity, just like I said, to uh, be able to help to solidify your legacy. You know, I never want anyone, especially here in Pennsylvania, um, to forget about the weight that the, the all the things that you did, all your contributions and the path that you paid, you know, paved um, for 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 guys who came after you and, and all of that. And also for this current generation, um, I want to educate them on, you know, individuals like yourself, man, and, and, right, and all right. the things that you did, you know, prior to that, man. So thank you for your presence tonight. Um, and, uh, you know, that's pretty much that, man. How, how's everything for you, man? It's good. It's just busy. I'm always busy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, between the kids and working, uh, starting this new uh, PPE business kind of uh, thing, which has uh, been going pretty well for me. Um, we service the uh, individuals who need it, whether it's hospitals, government, FEMA, and uh, we do a lot of brokering. So, uh, yeah, it's it's been fun, man, learning a lot about this in the last three months. You know what I'm saying? See what we can do. No doubt, no doubt. Well, God bless you, man. I'm, I'm going to get right into it. Um, uh, just to let you know, um, if we go into, uh, if we go, if we run into an hour, um, we'll just end this one and then start a new one and just, you know, pick up where we left off. Uh -huh. um, and right at the end, I'm going to have a nice little Q&A. Um, you know, the people, they, they love the interaction, so I'm going to let them, you know, ask you a few questions and then we're going okay. to take from there. So real quick, just to get us started, a little segment called 10 Random Questions. I'm going to just throw 10 random things at you and I'll okay. just warm up, all right? Okay. So, so first, uh, growing up uh, in, in, in the 80s and all that kind of stuff, what was your favorite cartoon growing up? My favorite cartoon growing up? Yeah. Well, I, listen, I got to go, go with the Fat Alberts of the world because they were from North Philadelphia. Yes, no doubt, no doubt. Classic, I appreciate that. That's, that's 100%. Um, at any level, what's the most points you ever scored at any level, like middle school, high school, summer leagues, college, pro, anything? Well, pro, uh, 41 was my career high. Got you. Got you. Um, Probably been more if I didn't play with Steve. No, I'm just kidding. I love Steve. <laughs> I love Steve. But um, um, yeah, I mean, I, playing in the summer leagues, you know, college was in the 30s, uh, summer leagues, 60s. But uh, I, you know, I, once I really know how to play the game, yeah, then I wasn't really worried about the scoring part. Gotcha. It was it was more about uh just kind of facilitating, gotcha. uh, and being dominant when I have to. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, thinking back. Um, what was one thing that kind of stuck out that was uh, that may have been kind of like a hurdle or like a difficult transition that that something that, that may have made the transition difficult going from like you know either either high school to pro or I'm, I'm sorry high school to college or college to pro what's something that was a little bit of adversity um, and, and you know and, and how'd you deal with it um you know what I because playing with so many pros at a young age mm -hmm. um it wasn't so much as the, the 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 difficult part of playing the game. It's just the psyche behind it. Gotcha. Uh, because just like life, right, you have your ups and downs. And uh, I revert, I, you know, I, I everything I relate to is because of basketball when it's ups and downs, it's up 20, down 20, uh, bad days, bad weeks, bad months, whatever it is, and it's just about keep fighting. So uh, for me, I think it was more so in college 
um, just understanding uh, your social life with your dedication of basketball to your dedication of schoolwork and really trying to become the man that you want to become at that same time uh, by pleasing everybody else too. So it was, a, you know, th that uh, for anybody is confusing uh, where you stand, uh, not just with yourself, but just with the rest of society. No doubt. No doubt. Appreciate those gems. Um, what was your favorite, um, one of your favorite sports related movies from, from any era, from any time? Sports related. <laughs> oh. I mean, I would go, I would go blue chips. I would go blue chips. Blue chips. Yeah, I like blue chips. Uh, no doubt. Well, um, no, I, become, I would say I would say Space Jam, but blue chips was was pretty cool at the time for me. One hundred percent, one hundred percent. Coming up in the Philly area, um, what's a player or players um, that you may have admired and kind of looked up to when you were when you were coming up and you know still paying your dues? I mean, it was everybody. I was a football football player, but then playing, you know, my best friends was Alvin Williams, Rasheed Wallace. You know, Sean Colson, Ty Weeks, Jason Lawson. There was all of us. Yeah. So, you know, you had Eddie Jones and Aaron McKee and Rick Brunson. And, you know, it was just so Mark Jackson. It was so many of us. Kobe Bryant. It was so many of us that, uh, that uh, I, you know, I'm the one. I was kind of the best kept secret from Catholic school where all these guys are playing inner city ball. Yeah. So I was just trying to fit in. Gotcha. So, uh, you know, they embraced me. So I looked up to everybody. You know, gotcha. every, all those guys. Lionel Simmons, Doug Overton. Poo Richardson, Randy Woods. Mm. It was, you know, Kareem Towns was amazing to me, one of the smoothest scores ever. Yes. You know, uh, and, and, you know, just looking up to them and understanding what it, what it takes to become, you know, a great, uh, mm. you know, I, I, uh, I really, uh, you know, I admire that about a lot of them. No doubt, no doubt. Um, what, what, I heard you mention football. What were some other sports that you um, revisited? What were some other sports that you played um, growing up? I was a, I, you know, from boxing. My dad had me boxing. And then football was my sport. And then basketball, I just fell in love with. So for basketball, I just took that and just ran with it. Uh, because, you know, basketball to me is that tingly feeling that you have in your, you know, your stomach and in your heart, man, that you just, you know, it's just, it's just a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing, you know. So once you understand it mentally, physically, and emotionally, uh, you can paint your own picture. No doubt, no doubt. Um, growing up in the 80s, Everybody like either was break dancing or doing this and that. It was it was, certain, <laughs> some, it was things that just went that was synonymous with the eighties. And wrestling was one of them. So yeah. who were some of your favorite wrestlers coming up in the eighties? <laughs> WWF, uh, NWA. It's so funny. It's so that. funny. I still talk about that. Ric Flair and Dusty Rhodes and Hulk Hogan and yes. you know like the the Road Warriors and uh, you know it's just uh, you know what is uh Roundy Roddy Piper Jake yes. the Snake <laughs> in the Piper you know, Pit. <laughs> Jimmy Superfly Snooker, you know yes, what I'm saying? Yes, like, yes, you just you just had to love all of them, man, because it was just, it was, you know, especially back then, it, you know, when you're a little kid, you're thinking, damn, this is real. You exactly. know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, and, uh, yeah, man, I just love that. Saturday nights when they had that WW come on at nighttime and you stay up and watch it, it was just, yes. it was a beautiful feeling, man. That's when Eddie Murphy was popping for Saturday Night Live and he yes, had his movie. Yes, yes. And, yes, uh, yeah, man, it was just, it was a beautiful time in the 80s. A hundred percent. Um, all right, so go back to your class. You graduated what year? Ninety I went ninety two, I was younger, so then I went to prep school ninety three, myself and Sean Colson. Gotcha. So so like ninety ninety two, ninety three, if you could have taken um including yourself, um, a five, you know, to, to go to any state around that time, you know, Philly versus anybody, who would you have taken with you? Well, I wasn't I wasn't as good as everybody else at that time. So I was just trying to learn. So um it'd be Alvin Williams. Uh, it'd be uh, Rasheed Wallace, it'd be Jason Lawson, it'd be Ty Weeks, you know, um, you know, those guys for me, um, you know, uh, they were just uh, they were unbelievable. Uh, the poise that they had, uh, they were groomed. Um, they were, you know, I mean, if you have a front court with Jason Lawson, Rasheed Wallace, and Tyrone Weeks, you're not getting no rebounds. You might not even get no layups. No doubt. <laughs> and, then Al and then Alvin was just a pure point guard. No so, um, you know, the two, I mean, you can put me at the two, but, you know, uh, again, like I said before, you know, back then when I was that young, I was good and athletic, but I wasn't as smart then. Gotcha. So, you know, the, uh, I don't know, the, the, the Randy Woods is of the world, the, the Kareem Towns is of the world, uh, mm -hmm. you know, Aaron McKee, Eddie Jones is of the world, can fit those spots. So, you know, I was I was just a humble kid, man, just trying to make it. And, uh, you know, I I got really good fast. Yeah, uh, 
and um, you know, I just I had that confidence, and I just came. It, it just it became it, it became like a drug. I just yeah. I just yeah yeah, yeah. I just Great wanted to become play. better and better and stay in the gym. So no doubt, yeah. Um, whenever you come back home to Philly, you know, city brotherly loves known for cheesesteaks. How do you order your cheesesteak? Oh, where's wit? Salt, pepper, What's ketchup, where's wit? No doubt. <laughs> yeah, I cut the cut the ends. Salt, pepper, ketchup, where's wit? Gut gut no. the roll too. Gut that thing. I want all that bread. I want all that meat. Yeah. I know that's right. I don't know. You get right. that. And, uh, shout, shout out to another legend, Flip Murray in the building. Flip Murray. Flip, my God. Guy. That's another one right there. Goodness yeah. gracious. Him yeah, and Buzz. Right. Him and Buzz used to torture the streets. I mean, they used to scare. <laughs> they used to scare all of us. I'm like, I do not feel like with these dudes right here. I don't feel like it. I know that's right. Hey, last question. The same random question. It's the beard question. Yeah. So my question to you is, at what point, you know, beard to beard, at what point do you become comfortable? Because it's the process. Yeah. You become comfortable with the salt and pepper at first and then letting it go all white. You know what I'm saying? Like, like you know, some cats be trying, you know, they try to dye it and all that. <laughs> like, but but, but to, to get comfortable with it, just to let it go, like, you know, tell me about that process from beard to beard, man. Because, cause, I mean, you, you're killing it. The all white, the salt and pepper that's, is amazing. You got the swag. I've been seeing your suits, like, and, and it fits. It, it, it's, it's, it's dope. Well, timing is appropriate, right? So at the end of the day, it's like the older you get, why are you trying to look younger, right? It's gotcha. just about grooming yourself, staying in shape. You know what I'm saying? If it's your beard is white, it's white. Like, it's just keep it like that. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it's not like you have an old face. Well, maybe yeah. some cats do, but, you know, yeah. uh, you know, I, for me, I just, I ran with it. Corey McGetty and I'm like, yo, just keep it salt and pepper. You be the silver fox. I'm like, no doubt. Yeah, I, I guess so. I mean, you know what I'm saying? I cut it down right now because it was just so much. Yeah, yeah, quarantine, but uh, you know, I'll be called get called Papa Smurf and all <laughs> types of crazy stuff, but it's all good though, you know what I'm saying? Nah, I, from, I love the great beard, beard. you killing it for the beard Thanks. culture, man. I mean, you know, I checked out a couple of pages on Instagram, you know, you got the whole drip, you got the suits, you got the swag, so it fits, man. So, so keep keep it going, dog. My man, <laughs> all right, so just want to get into it, man. Um, I, I, um, I already know that you're a great storyteller. So um, I don't want to get in the way of you telling your story. So I'm going to just give you the freedom just to just to wrap. I'll interject any questions if I need to. But just start us out from the beginning, man, and just let us know where the cat, um, you know, Catino Mobley story begins. And, and we'll just we'll just we'll just sit right there. Well, I mean, you know, I, I come from North Philadelphia, you know what I'm saying? And, and for me, uh, just growing up, kind of like not really understanding NBA, not really understanding Division One. I, I just wanted to be accepted by my peers and uh, mm -hmm. from from boxing to football to basketball, I had amazing, I mean, to, to this day, I have amazing friends, uh, Kaida Williams and, you know, Dookie Williams, Jermaine Williams, uh, um, Washington. So, like, it's just, you know, I have, uh, you know, Alvin Williams, and I just had so many really good supportive friends. My my cousin, who's, the, you know, the closest thing to me, uh, Kamal Yard, who runs our uh, AAU. So, I mean, just for me, you know, I... I Man, I, Chris, Chris Williams, who was the star at our school at Colonel Doherty, is my mentor. He was, I looked up to him. He was left-handed. He was smooth as hell. He played at uh, my, uh, Manhattan. And he's a motivational speaker right now. He's from Philly. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was MVP of the Catholic League. And I wanted to be like him. I was, I was a freshman sneaking in to the gym, just watching him do his one-on-one -on -one full courts and jump shots. And everything he did was just so smooth. And, I, you know, I'm coming from football practice. And I just wanted to be just like that. You know, I just wanted to be carefree. I wanted to be, you know, the cool dude walking down the hallways like Chris. And to this, and to this day, you know what I'm saying, I always tell him, like, if it wasn't for you, like, to, inspiring me, I wouldn't know where I'm at. And then, then I met, you know, uh, the, the Alvin Williams and the Rasheed Wallace and the Jason Lawsons and Sean Colsons and all those guys uh, with my cousin Kamal. And uh, Kaida was another – Kaida wins where people don't know. He's a street baller who taught me how to slash to the basket and use both hands. And it was just, it was a lot of like mentoring I got from a lot of those guys. And I think the reason why I kept up and, and I, I, I progressed so fast is because of the hunger I had, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And they pushed me, mm -hmm. they pushed me a lot. So for me, uh, you know, it, it just it spiraled from there. And then I had my white boys from Catholic school that taught me how to shoot the ball and, no doubt. you know, all that type of stuff. So you coming from the hood, you got the white boys in the suburbs teaching you how to do certain stuff. You get the best of both worlds. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, uh, you know, when we were growing up, man, in the 90s, you know what I'm saying? Like, you was trying to go to Division One. You weren't trying to go to no pros. Yeah, You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, you wanted to go D1. You know, we yeah, wanted to be on yeah. TV. Yeah. So that's what we talked about mostly, you know what I'm saying? And, 
and uh, it was just fighting to get there. And, uh, you know, I was just doing everything possible to, to get to that moment, right? From graduating from high school to going to MCI at a young age and yep, yep. Sean Colson and myself, he played at Franklin Learning Center, who was one of the best point guards in our city, mm-hmm. you know, and they won a championship with uh, Ty Weeks. And, uh, you know, he had a, they had a bomb squad. And, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, for for me, I mean, uh, with uh, foreign hand, I'm sorry, for Ron Hand, for Ron Hand was amazing, yeah. meatball. meatball. So yeah, uh, yeah. so uh, you know, for me, you know, I I, uh, I just I just kept grinding, man. I, I just didn't look at anybody else's backyard. I was just grooming my own grass. And then when I got to college, Sean and I went to college. You know, that's when I started to realize, like, wow, I'm playing with. Eddie Jones, Aaron McKee, and all these guys, Rick Brunson's and Doug yeah. Overton's and Lionel Simmons and Mark Makins of the world. And yeah. I'm like, I think I can play this game. Like, I yeah. think I really, I'm, I yeah. think I can go to the next level if I keep working. Yeah. You know, so. I mean, just, 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 just pause. Keep your thoughts, but just pause mm-hmm. real quick. So, like, did you not have the confidence or you didn't think that you were on that level? Or, or you know what I'm saying? Like, what, what was it? You know what I'm saying? For you to realize, kind of, to realize some of those things about yourself that late, that late, you know, that later down in your path. Well, you got to think about it, right? Whatever you do in life, right? Especially if you're new at it and you don't really understand it, it's intimidating. So yeah. you see other people that are playing AAU or playing here or playing there and they have more experience than you. It's not that they're better. They just have more experience. Gotcha. So once you have that experience, whether it's in business, right? I've, 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 I've dove into the business world about 10 years ago. So a lot of my peers, a lot of my brothers, or calling me, asking me, yo, what, what is this? What is that? You know, this, that, whatever. And I had to humiliate myself first in uh-huh. the business world where you had guys who come from generational wealth or they graduate from Harvard, Stanford, or business schools. And business and te- their DNA, yeah. Right, they're teaching me. Yeah. So it's kind of like the same thing. I, I think what a lot of young cats need to do is male or female is like, you have to, you have to be comfortable with humility. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And humble yourself to say, you know what? It is uncomfortable for me for this year, two, three, four, five. But if I really love something, it's not work, right? Yep. It's a passion. So I think, you know, never second guessing myself, but yet still having that fear of like, wow, can I get better? So I think that's what drives anyone in life mm-hmm. is, you know, I want to be better. I want to be better. So what do you do to get better? You know, these late nights, there's early mornings, there's, you know, things that other people don't do. And uh, there's a 10,000 hour theory by Malcolm Gladwell. If anybody's ever read that book, it's called Outliers. Okay. It explains that, right? So mm-hmm. it's not a coincidence that the majority of us that were hung around each other when we were teenagers are all pros. Yep. You know yep. what I'm saying? So we, we had the same habit yep. uh, and, and the same hunger. So, you know, I, it's just, you know, for me, uh, just speaking for me, I, I, I was very scared and I was humble to like, but, you know, I, I was very hyper too at the same time because I wanted it so bad, uh-huh. but I didn't know how to manage it because I didn't have the experience that everybody else had because they were playing to say with seven, eight, nine, yeah, playing yeah, different yeah. teams. I didn't, I didn't get that chance. Gotcha. So when I mess, when I used to mess up, I'm like, God damn it, what you doing? Like, you know, <laughs> messing with yourself, knowing yes. that now basketball is an imperfect sport. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, <laughs> it, it it got to the point, man. I mean, I shoot, I get to the pros and my pro team was Scottie Pippen, Charles Barkley, Akeem Olajuwon. <laughs> so I'm playing one-on-one with Scotty. I'm messing with Charles. I'm on a plane with them. Like, it's just, it was a dream come true. Wow. And, and Scottie Pippen and Eddie Jones were my idols. Like, they were my guys that they did everything. They played, yeah. they had a score. They played the game. It was just like that. So it took me a while to become, you know, not as good as them, but it took me a while to become more confident in myself but I still had that North Philly loud mouth kind of background where I had to calm yeah. that down a little bit uh-huh. because it was kind of like you kind of like overconfident. You know what yeah. I'm saying? When somebody's really yeah. confident, they don't really have to tell you how uh-huh. good they are. They just show That's you. Right. That's right. You know, so I, I learned that more so when I got in the league and I saw the praise that a lot of the Nick Van Exels and the Sam Cassells and then Antonio McDyces and the Tim Duncans of the world playing. They picked me first in runs and I want cat, you know, and that made me feel better. So after my first year in the NBA, I'm poking my chest out no matter what city I went to or where, where I went to in the world because I'm playing Scottie Pippen one-on-one. I'm playing Charles. I'm playing this person. I'm getting picked first with all these stars, <laughs> yeah. and I'm killing. So, I mean, I don't care who's involved. Everybody yeah. can get some of this. <laughs> yeah. but that's how I felt. Yeah. Well, when did you realize 
that you were one of the stars, that, that people may have been looking at you in the same way that you looked at other individuals? You know what, man? Uh, <laughs> we were on a bus, and it was uh, our second year in. It was me, Jason Williams, Vince Carter, all of us. We were on a bus, and it was a sophomore rookie game. And um, the inside stuff was on talking to me. Inside stuff. Yeah, yeah they were talking to me, and the guy was annoying to Jason Williams. And Jay was like, yo, leave him alone. Let him breathe. Everybody always want to talk to Cat like that. So when he said that, I'm admiring him because he white chocolate. He he like magic even better when it comes to the past than Pistol Pete, yes. you know, at his time. Yes. And I'm like, damn, I, I kind of made it a little bit. Like, <laughs> I got these other dudes kind of like got my back on all these yeah. interviews. Yeah. So, you know, from there, it's just like that made me more hungry. That made me yeah. want to do more. And, you know, it's just, I don't know, man. I just... I never really walked around like I was a star, but I knew my peers were like, wow, this boy can go kind of thing. And that made you're, me feel a lot better. You appreciated you. Right. You were one of their peers. Right. You definitely exactly. wasn't the weakest link. <laughs> right, 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 right. No right, doubt. Yeah. Um, what, what, going back, uh, just, just, to, just to put in perspective um, for any young players that are watching this right now who may not have, you know, saw you play professionally, or, you know, like in your, you know, during the pro days or college, um, describe your strengths, describe what type of player you were, describe your strengths, you know, things you did well on the court and things that you were confident at. Well, I mean, for me, it, it progressed, right? Because I've never played the point guard position ever in my life until I got to the pros. And that's oh, the hardest wow. position to play, yeah. right? And, but I learned it from Alvin Williams, Tyson, Tyson Wheeler, Sean Coulson, a lot, you know, Rick Brunson. I learned it from a lot of those like, point like, guards. Being a floor general is like a mindset. Like, you yeah, it is. Be, you know what I'm saying? It is, man. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I made our rookie team playing out of position. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and there was a lot of mentorship by Scottie Pippen and a lot of those guys. So, you know, I, I think for a lot of the young guys, just be willing to learn, right? Be willing, be willing to be humiliated. Be willing to, to, to understand that it's going to be a lot of tough days that are out there. But the more you work hard, the uh, the better your odds will be of 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 uh, of, of of excellence, right? So, you know, Coach Jim Herrick, who's one of the best mentors ever in my life, you know, he said, "Good luck happens when opportunity meets preparation." You know, yep. you can't just go practice at one, uh, for an hour a day or two hours a day and think that's cool, right? Yeah. You got to go three, four times a day and split yeah. your days up. It's what you want. You want social life or you want to be the, the guy? Yeah. So me, I wanted to, I want to be the guy. And Alvin Williams, him and I, and Jason Lawson will be in that gym all day long. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm talking about Friday, Saturday nights when everybody else is having fun and partying. Yeah, so, yeah. That's, you know, what that, I that's the sacrifice Alvin, you have to get. When I interviewed Alvin, that's what he said. Like, gym, late nights, getting into the gym, everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's not a, it's not a, it's not rocket science, man. It's like, uh -huh. <laughs> if you love something, it's not work. You know what I'm saying? And, and it, it may not be your time, but if you love it, it, it doesn't really, right? Like, yep. a lot of guys that didn't make the league, sad eye. I mean, he was amazing. He was one yep. of my favorites to ever watch. Yep. You know, we call him Baby Pro. I mean, he was the best. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and, you know, some guys just don't make it. But, I mean, it's just about your dedicate. Kaida Ka Williams, he was amazing. But, you know, he he was more of in the, in the streets and in the hood type of stuff and, you know, things like that. But, you know, just watching a lot of those examples and saying, you know what, I want to I wanna do this for us, not just for myself, but just for our hood. You know what I'm saying? So I had a lot of guys pushing me to become the best I could be. Got you, got you. All right, so so take us back. Let's go back into a time machine. Take me back to let, let's talk about for for a few minutes. Let's talk about all of your summer league memories. Any any <laughs> summer leagues in the Philly? Like most memorable experiences? Whether you played down 16 Susquehanna, the Sunny Hill leagues. Just 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 go back to those days and, and what you remember from those days. Players you played against, memorably things that people probably still talk about to to this day. I mean, you know what? I, I'd be going blank on that stuff, man. I'm not Got really it. a good guy who remembers those things, but yeah. just watching Aaron O, uh, Aaron or uh, Ao or or Alvin or you know uh, Sean Smith or you know um, uh, Lawrence Pembrokes in the world, yeah. like yeah. Yeah. you know yeah. Ricky Heights of the world, like you you had so many. The Sunny Hill McGonagall Hall was lit up. Yes. Playgrounds were lit up. Yeah, and it was just for me. It was like a club. It was. Uh -huh. It was like, it to me. It, that was my club. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like being ready to play next or watching my peers. To me, that I mean, I, I just South Philly would bring Kareem Towns and Randy Woods, <laughs> and it was like, 
wow, this is <laughs> crazy. Like, I mean, it was the who's who when we played. Yeah. And, uh, you know, shouts out to, uh, you know, Sonny Hill for even putting us in that position. But, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, oh, gosh, man. Yeah, is, we is could go to anything, different playgrounds yeah. everywhere. Is there anything that you remember from – the McGonagall Hall um, days, like like any 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 just thing that kind of sticks out, or it's all kind of a blur. Or just you know, just just you know, just anything you me- you made. Well, I remember I remember when I came back from prep school. So I always wanted to prove everybody else wrong, right? I always wanted to kill everybody. Yeah. So I come back from prep school and I played on a b- bullshit team. It's cool. Uh, but <laughs> I came up press and I was getting forty and fifties all the time, mm. and then we were losing championships because I was getting double teamed or whatever, triple team, whatever it was, and I didn't really know how to play like I do now uh-huh. or like I did when I got in the pros right I was just more so like I need to score I need to kill everything but I didn't know how to like manage my score you know what uh-huh. I'm saying monetize a lot of that I didn't know that then but mm-hmm. you know I was coming and dunking that thing I was shooting threes I'm I'm going I mean it was just at that point in time like I when I came from prep school I was a totally different totally different player got you Got you, got you. Um, did, did you have any experience with, um, I mean, a staple? Whenever I get the opportunity to mention his name, I definitely want to, you know, keep him alive and talk about his legacy. Um, Harnett, did you did you have my, that's my That's my guy. That's the reason why we're here. Yeah, talk, that's talk my guy. Let, 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 let the viewers know about Harnett, what he meant to you and who he was, man. Yeah, so John, uh, Alvin played on John's team in the um, Sunny Hill League. And uh, I played on the South, uh, South East, uh, Northeast uh, team. And, uh, you know, John was just disciplined, man. He loved us so much. He he had the, uh, he had the uh, you know, gyms ready for us to work out in. And I was a little knucklehead, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I wasn't as uh, calm and cool like I am now. So, you know, he banned me from playing for a while. Wow. Yeah, he banned me for a while. Like, you can come see, but you can't play. Like, wow. you need to work on your attitude. You need to work on all your, your wow. aggression. Real? Yeah, man. So I would, you know, beg him, let cat, in. let let cat play, let this, that, whatever. <laughs> so I like, yo, cat, you gotta act right, man. You be tripping. So you know, me coming from north, I'm just acting stupid. Dang. So uh, you know, I had to calm myself down a little bit, and then he started letting me play. And uh, I mean, if it wasn't for him, man, I don't know where we'd be at. All of us. Wow, that's dope, man. Um, so so t- t- tell me about some of your um your your, your memories in high school, your, your cardinal uh, cardinal Dockety memories. Um, any just any memorable experiences, memorable games, highlights, anything uh, from your from your high school days? Oh man, high school days are crazy, man. We used to play McDevitt, and uh, oh. McDevitt was a it was a Catholic school, but it was a uh, majority black. Uh-huh. And uh, actually, to to this day, Ryan Preston, who's one of my best friends, he's president of Warner Chapel. His brother Dame Preston, who we played against. Right, uh, Ryan Joe, is my guy. Ryan yeah, is my yeah. Man. yeah, yeah. That's my guy. Ryan, yeah, that's yeah. Man. So, so uh, we used to play them, and we used, it used to get so crazy that they banned us from playing them on Friday nights. Wait, it was, what? It was, it was, yeah, it was lit up. I mean, it no was like Friday night game. no Friday night, not with us, not with us and them. It was fights and everything, crazy. Wow. So, but from there, there, uh, you know, I, I, uh, my senior year, we played. Uh, I think McDevitt, they beat us, right? We we was killing everybody. McDevitt beat us, and that was Dame's, you know, bragging rights right there. But then we played Roman Catholic, who was always, like, recruiting kids from all over the damn country, it seemed like. Uh-huh. Yeah, Mike Tab. They had uh, Sugar Hill, Dwayne Sugar Hill. They had Mark Jackson. They had uh, – who else they had? Uh, Kyle uh, – Kyle uh, – what's Kyle's last name? I forget Kyle's last name. Whatever. Now, he was the main scorer. Uh-huh. And, uh, you know, they beat us. I had a terrible first half. Mm. And the second half, we lost about six or seven, whatever it was. But, you know, I always wanted to win the championship, and I couldn't win it in high school. Uh, but, uh, you know, at high school, again, man, it was so much – listen, it was so much stuff for me going on. You know, no one thought I would go to uh, Kyle Lott, I think his name was. Kyle Lott. Yeah, that sounds familiar. Yeah, sounds Kyle familiar. Lott, yep. Yeah. But, uh, you know, it was so such a blur for me because I didn't think I was going to no pros at first. Okay. So I could, I didn't really, like, harness a lot of those memories yeah, yeah, like yeah. I should have, right? Got, My cousin got, Kamal, he got a memory of a damn elephant. So he remembered yeah, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some guys but, uh, they just don't forget anything. <laughs> yeah, so me, it was like a blur. Like, you got know, I forget got. shit I did last week, but it's all yeah, good. Yeah. So did you? So did you? I mean, I mean that's interesting, man. So so you make it to where you, you know, where, where you, you achieve what you achieve. But in that moment, you didn't realize that you had that type of potential. 
to, to be on those, like, to play at the highest level, you didn't realize that about yourself? Nah, man. Nah. I mean, I believed in myself, but it was my own belief, right? So, like, I'm looking at everybody else and what they're doing. Eddie Jones teaching me a fadeaway, and I can't get to it. I can't stop him on moves. I can't stop Aaron McKee. I can't do this. I'm like, God dang, this is – I don't know if I'm ready for this one because I can't even stop these dudes. <laughs> and, you know, it's just a lot of those type of situations that would happen that kind of molded me into the mentally strong individual that I am today. Yeah. Uh, and I think a lot of football, you know, a lot of just fighting to to, to, to get to where I'm at. But, uh, you know, <laughs> it's not that I didn't believe in myself. I just, it was just a lot going on. It's my daughter right here. Oh, that's so beautiful. Have a kiss. Love you. I'm on a podcast, okay? Uh, a little intern. Love you so much. Can you close that door? But, uh, yeah, man, so, uh, yeah, so it's not that I really didn't believe in myself. So you can believe in yourself all day long. and You're not, not that good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not yeah, yeah, true that. <laughs> so, you, know, you can fake yourself out all you want, but, uh, you know, it, it, you know, I just think if you just keep fighting, I always say that, man, just keep fighting. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, and if you love something, it's not work. Got you, got you. Um, what what camp? Do you have any camp memories? I remember, you know, back then it was like ABC. I didn't even go to camp. Oh, you ain't go to no camps, camps or nothing no. like that. Nope. Like like the Nike ABCD. Nope. And Let it go to no go. camps. <laughs> nope. I, all them went to camps. I ain't even go to camp. And that was another thing that I was kind of nervous about. Damn, they going to camps. They getting this. They doing that. But then I'm playing with them, and I'm playing up to par. Like I'm doing yeah. my own thing. Yeah. But still, like I wasn't, there was no, I wasn't uh, nothing. Like wasn't, you, you, you wasn't, you wasn't getting invited. Your name wasn't on that radar, or what? Like, what, do you, what was it? Well, I mean, I was. I mean, I, I only played one, truthfully, one full year of high school varsity basketball. So, I mean, oh, wow. I, why would they? Yeah. Why would they? Uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, pick me. You have other kids that's five star and A B C D. I ain't know nothing about none of that. Wow. So wow. yeah. So, so yeah. you um, so did you play any AAU ball or anything nope, like that? No, no AAU, no. Only thing I played is Sunny Hill. Gotcha. So, what led to? I guess my, leads to my next question. What led to MCI and then to Rhode Island? Like, you know, what? what well, MCI, to? MCI is because I was still immature, right? I was 17 years old as a senior. Everybody else was a little older than me, you know, and I needed more basketball in my mm -hmm. my game. I needed more games. Yeah. I need to understand the game more. I need to bulk up a little bit. I need to, you know, be mentally uh, 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 ready. So I, uh, the prep school thing was uh, the best thing for me because it, it helped me improve in so many different areas. Here, 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 pause, here, pause. Talk about the prep school, but real quick before that, prior to MCI, were you getting recruited from 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 colleges and stuff like? You know what I mean? No. Nope. Prior to? No. Nope. Wait, 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 mm -hmm. wait a minute. You wasn't getting recruited, dog. No, nope, no, nope. and I mean, listen, that's a, that's what? another thing too, is no right? Like people you're don't understand. You're in the NBA, and you wasn't getting recruited in high no, school. No, nope, no, this is unbelievable. No, nope. nope. I different. remember, I remember sitting at LaSalle at one little, I forget what this was. It wasn't even a camp, but it was like you know a little weekend thing or whatever. And uh, the guys like, you know what, you you probably you know you probably do NAIA. Guy said that. Wow. And it's, and listen, I didn't take that as this for you know. I didn't take oh, I'm going to prove him wrong. It wasn't that. I was just like, I like you know, I, I he doesn't know he didn't know where I, I picked up a ball at 13. So it wasn't like I was, you know, what I'm saying I wasn't playing basketball at six, so seven, eight years said, old. You, you, uh, you said you learned fast, and that's yeah. my wife right there, uh, Stars D. But you know, we we family of faith. She said that's favor, that's God's favor, right? There. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I've been lucky ever since, man. I mean, I come into the NBA. I was the second round. Roderick Rhodes was before me. He was at Kentucky. Uh, there was uh, Bryce Drew. He was the first rounder. Michael Dickerson was the first rounder, won the championship. All it had seven guards in front of me. Roderick Rhodes tears his shoulder in, in uh, preseason. Mm. Uh, I'm killing in preseason, but they're not playing because I'm a second rounder. You got to play your first rounders. Of course. And, and Bryce Drew was, you know, he was good, but he was, he was a slower cat. And I love Bryce, but, you know, NBA just wasn't his speed. You yeah. know what I'm saying? He, he, had a, he had a fight in him kind of thing. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? And, and and then Michael Dickerson was great, but he was very recluse. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? And it was like not really can handle the ball, but great shooter, great pull-up, defend, all that. So I came in doing all of it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it is favor. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and then coming from North Philadelphia, coming from Philadelphia, period. Yeah. You know, you got you got a certain fight in you. Yeah. Yo, I'm, I'm, this, this is gems. I love these stories because I'm always finding out things that I did not know. I did not know 
that you were not recruited in high school, man. That's that's, that's no. amazing. Now, that's nope. amazing. <laughs> nope. So 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 what? Let so uh, well. Okay, you weren't recruited. So did you? Did you think that you were, were? Did you have an interest in playing college ball, or you know? No, I did. I I definitely had an interest. Yeah. But again, it was more so you got to go to prep school, get yeah. yourself better, figure this yeah. out, blah, blah, blah. Where did where, 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 where MCI come from? Like, you know, did you contact them? They reached out to you? How no, yeah, out? my coaches, my coaches in high school was just trying to figure out what should you do. And the funny okay. is, MCI was number one in the country. Exactly. So now I'm going, I'm going to a, I'm going to a school that's number one in the whole country. Yes. Right. And now I'm like, I'm nervous going up there because I'm like, this the who's who. These are post grads. Yes. Right, these dudes are big old muscles and all that old crazy shit. I'm like, God damn. <laughs> so I, I get up there and I started at the two two guard spot. And uh, you know, I listen, I was up four or five o'clock in the morning before practice started. I was after practice, I was getting going late. I was again, I had a fear, and it wasn't a it was I just a fear of just failing. Mm -hmm. So that fear drove me to be who I am. Mm -hmm. So that's what basically what that was. Yeah, so how – and you stayed there one one year or yeah, two? One I, stayed, year. I stayed there one year, and then I went to uh, University of Rhode Island. Yeah, so so how how the MCI experience – you know, how, was that a positive experience? Were you playing well? No, it was great. You know, MCI, man, you're the city kid going up in Maine and Central Maine, and everything closed at 5 o'clock. You know, I had host parents, you know, you know, and no disrespect to them. I loved them. It was uh, Duffy McAllister was his name. He was a golfer uh -huh. and uh, his wife and uh, them. And they were super cool. You know, but again, I'm a city kid. You know, you go into their house and their food is different than what you really eat. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's a little quiet and it ain't noisy. <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah, I stayed on campus a lot. And I got a lot of friends from there. But, you know, uh, Max Good was, you know, I had a really great coaches, man. That's another thing, too, that made me a better person, a better player. Uh, Max Good was my coach. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you would have thought he was racist, you know, all this, the shit he used to say. Yeah. But, uh, you know, he loved me and I love him to this day. Uh, myself and Karan Butler is one of you know, two of his favorite players ever. Wow. Yeah. So, uh, you know, uh, it, it was just, it was definitely, a, uh, you know, we had Dimitri Dumani. He played on the Russian, uh, the Russian national team. Um, uh, we had, we had a lot of really good guys on our team, man. And we gelled as brothers, especially during that time, being 18 years old, you know, not knowing really nothing. You know, some guys were 19, but, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like we, we, uh, it was fun, man. It was it was definitely fun. Uh, it was a different experience, though, right? Like driving on them buses down to uh, Norfolk, Virginia, to play prep schools, and in Connecticut and New Hampshire, and all over the place. You kind of learn more of yourself. Yeah. What? Well, what? Well, um. Just you just reminded me of something. What was it like during that experience? Possibly for for the first time, not having, not looking in the crowd and seeing your family and your friends in the crowd. Was that, did that matter to you? Was that not a big deal or like, is no. that not, okay, not, no. not a big deal? Okay, gotcha, no. gotcha. No, um, not at all. Not yeah. at all for me. Gotcha. Um, tell me about um, the whole college recruiting process. So who was, you did well at MCI, so who starts recruiting you? And then what ultimately, what were some other schools that recruited you? And then what led to you choosing um, choosing Rhode Island? Well, I'm, I'm going to say that one first. I chose Rhode Island because of Sean Colson. He was like, yo, we can go here and be big fish in a little pond. We can, we can bring this school up, blah, blah. So I listened to that. But the schools that recruited me was Temple, uh, Kentucky, uh, UCLA, um, different schools like that. And um, uh, Georgetown came in. Uh, and it was more so where I thought I fit at, right? Uh, I wanted to go to school with Alvin, uh, Jason Lawson, Rashid, but Kerry Kittles was in uh, at Villanova, and he was yeah. amazing. Kerry yeah, was amazing. Kerry, it wasn't. It wasn't no going in there. You was sitting on the bench because Kerry was unbelievable. Yeah. So, so had uh, he not been there, he was a possibility. You could have possibly. I, I wanted to go with Alvin and Jason and Rashid, yeah. but Rashid yeah. went to North Carolina. Exactly. Alvin and Jason went to Villanova. Yeah. And then I went to uh, Rhode Island with uh, Sean. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 So tell me about the um about about the the Rhode Island experience. Kind of sum that up. What were some highlights? You know, uh, career highlights. You know. Uh, any 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 rival games, big games? Oh yeah, Sham got Sham, We was we were our rivals with Sham got Wells and uh, uh, Jamil Thomas. Uh, they played for Providence. Providence, yeah, yeah. Them my guys. I used to drive up every day to work on my handles with uh, Sham got. He would wow. teach me that. Tell yeah, me about I used to go. That. Talk about yeah, that, man. Talk yeah. About yeah. About me that. and Sham, me and Sham, man. We to this day. He always asked me for this tape. So he, he used to give me this tape, right? And it was like a lot of the cats from New York that can dribble, like Booker Washington or. Uh, what was his name? Booker, what, Booker, 
Boogie Washington, Boogie Boogie Booger Washington, Booger, something. Yeah, he Booger, went to St. Yeah. John's. He went to St. Yeah. John's. I think so. Yeah, yeah. He went to St. John's and um and uh, uh Kenny Anderson's of the world and he, he this tape was filled with all guys with handles. So we would literally he would teach me how to dribble, and for me, it was like watching Sham God the way he dribbled that ball. It was like art. So I was like, listen, I want to learn what you're doing. I can't do exactly what you or Alvin Williams and all these guys do tricky what you do. But as long as I don't get somebody to take this goddamn ball from me, I'm good. <laughs> so, <laughs> so yeah. The art of not getting it taken. Yeah, I, don't, I just don't, as long as they don't take it. I ain't trying to be Jason Williams or none of y'all. No as doubt. long as you don't take this ball. No doubt, no doubt. That's what's up. So tell me about some of them, um, some of those games. Is, is there anything that you remember about um, the Rhode Island experience, like, you know, going against Sham God? You know, any, what's, what's any games you remember or just anything about um, Rhode Island? Well, yeah, we we uh, we used to have a really heavy schedule, right? We would play uh, Damon Stoudemire and Khalid Reeves in Arizona. Okay. They was ranked in the country. UMass was ranked number one. We used to play a lot of heavy hitters, man. And uh, we, we had a great schedule every single year. And, uh, you know, it's just every year we make the tournament. And uh, my senior year when we made it, uh, we played Paul Pierce in them. Wow. Uh, and it was funny because after we played Murray State was the first round, you know, we beat them nice. Um, and uh, we watched uh, Prairie View, uh, Kansas play Prairie View. Uh-huh. And Kansas number one, Prairie View 16. So, you know, they smacked them and they dancing around, everything like that. And Jim Herrick walked over to me. He's like, yeah, see that? He's like, you want to go to the pros? I'm like, yeah. He's like, well, listen, I need 30 on them and a W. I said, hey, listen, no problem. I'm coming wow. for them. Wow. It was Paul, it was Paul Pierce and them. And, uh, you know, I, we come out the next game, and I just – me and Tyson Willis just get on fire, and I just start using my pull-ups and everything. And, uh, you know, just, it, and I think when you get to the tournament, man, if you have strong guards, you can go far. And uh, Tyson Willer and myself, who's one of the most underrated guards out there, um, I think uh, you'll pose a lot of problems for a lot of guys. So we, you know, get to the lead eight. Uh, we were uh, minutes away from the final four, so I, I enjoyed college. College was great, man. Yeah, yeah. Was uh, what's what's one of your biggest games? You think that you know you left the game like, man, I I walked off and dropped the mic in this game. <laughs> oh, we played we played Temple, right? We played Temple, and uh, my senior year, and I I might have hit seven or eight threes that game. Wow. And, no, yeah, it was crazy. I had to show off. It was a lot of talking and barking and all this old crazy stuff and I didn't want to hear nobody mouth and I when I say I swallowed them up I swallowed them up spit them right out and then I I, I think I hit about eight threes that game and then the next the next day we go play St. Joe's and Tyson Willer hit nine I'm like damn dog you don't want to <laughs> I had the record for a day but, uh, <laughs> but yeah we used to put on a nice little show it was fun man that's what's up. Hey, real quick, just want to take a second to shout out some legends, man. We got Lenard Stewart in the building. That's we my got, dude. Yeah. Nardi, Nardi. I forgot you, Nardi. I'm sorry. I love you, baby. We, we got Nardi, my dude. We got the Chester Glove, John Linehan in the building. John. You know, they in here, man. Wow. I them, man. wow I love it. Yeah. Hey, so um, NBA draft night. Um, Take me back to the, to, <laughs> right, the that week. T- t- tell me about that week and then that night. Oh, that experience man. Like man, I was so nervous, man. I, 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 I think I worked out for like 12 teams. And, uh, and, and in those workouts, I mean, they do one-on-ones. They do uh, three-on-threes. They did, uh, you know, uh, you know, verticals and all this other crazy stuff, you know, shots. I killed everything. And then I thought I was going to be but first round. you nervous. I was nervous, but I yeah. thought I was going to be first round, right? I'm thinking San Antonio was going to pick me, okay. but they picked Felipe Lopez in the first round, 24 or something like that. Yeah. But yeah. they were saying they was going to pick me. They was telling my agent that. So, uh, you know, yeah. the draft day come, boom, boom. You know, Alvin's over my house. We got people over my house, whatever it is. So I'm getting nervous. I got to walk around, everything like that. Boom. So it's, you know, first round goes. I'm like, damn, I'm in trouble. Oh, man, this is crazy. So it's so much anxiety. And uh, 30, wow. 31. 32, still not getting picked. 33, 34. Cats, I'm killing getting picked. So, I mean, I'm a like, God damn, it's crazy. So, you know, whatever the case is, is a commercial, right? So, I go walk away. And at my time, my kid's mom, uh, Tiffany, she, I went to her house and I came back. So, I come back, right? And uh, <laughs> I come back, I'm sitting, the, I'm sitting in the joint this year during the break. Uh, the Houston Rockets select Catino Moby. I went crazy, dog. During the I, break, everybody, they selected during the break, <laughs> during the wow. break. So I come, I come. Uh, you know, the 
commercial stuff, boom, come back live. They say, Tracy Rockets, select Tina Mobile. And then they call me. Man, my heart just, I, I felt so relieved then. I mean, it was one of the best feelings ever for me, just to be able to, knowing I worked so hard to get to a certain point like that. And I, I wish I could bottle that up and always, when I need it, always just smell that one. That's amazing, man. I mean, that's an amazing story in itself. A couple years prior, you have no college offers, and then, you know, you, you're getting selected by the Houston Rockets only a couple, <laughs> couple years later. That's, that's, that's insane, man. You know, that, me that, and Scotty talked about it. Me and Scotty Pippen talked about it. Scotty wasn't even recruited on his team. Exactly. Yep, you know what yep. I'm saying? We talked about that. Scotty was like a pure point guard kind of thing, yeah, but he was 6'7", yeah. 6'8". Six, six, yeah. So, and it just so happened that Scotty and I are really close friends now. He lived around the corner from me. So oh, I wow. go over no. Scotty's house and we talk about all this different stuff. Walk, 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 walk the camera around there. Get him on the live. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, man, it's crazy. That's dope. How that, you know, how that happened. And uh, we just went through that. And he's just telling me to keep working, you know, keep keep doing your thing. And, and it wasn't, you know, it's a lot of different people that I have to acknowledge. And him being one of them, my first year in the NBA, you know, I truly believe if Scotty Pippen was with me for three or four years, I'd be Hall of Famer with no problem. Because yeah. the way he kept me, the maturity level, it's like a dad being on the floor, right? And uh, telling you what to do, what not to do, get your rest, let's lift, let's do this. You need those things. And he only he was only with me for my lockout season. So that was 50-something games. And then he didn't, you know, he went to Portland. But if Scott is with me for the, my first three or four years, it would have been curtains. No doubt. No doubt. That's what's up, man. So so sum up. Tell me anything about um, your NBA career. Anything that you want to, you know, talk about. Just, just you know, talk about, you know, memorable experiences. You know, the same thing. Memorable experiences. Uh, some of the toughest players you had to go against. Um, highlights. Anything. My, my toughest guys, man. Whew, uh, I mean, from Tracy McGrady to uh, Kobe to AI was so light. Like, he's so light. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm, like, bulkier, you know? So when you touch AI, it was hard to really contain him because not only was he fast, he was quick, and he could score. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He had floaters. He had everything. You know, <laughs> Bubba Tuck was my guy. It was like, God, damn. It's like, and then you get the ball all the time. Like, that. Uh, just be, listen, being in everybody's presence for me, whether it's Vince Carter's of the world, Tracy McGrady's of the world, Kobe Bryant's of the world, you know, uh, you know, who used to give me problems, Nick Van Exel, God dang it. Nick the quick. <laughs> Terrell, Terrell Brandon, like these guys are coming off pick and rolls. John Stockton, he wouldn't even score, but he was coming off pick and rolls. Diamond Pe it used to bother me so much. <laughs> that I couldn't and, and again I'm I'm this is my first year playing a point guard position so you gotta learn how to get around pick and rolls and fight through them and blah blah and what's the right pass when you're coming off pick and rolls. So it was it was a tough Gary Payton talking shit all the time. <laughs> and, and I love him. That's my guy to this yes. day. Like that's my yes. guy. Every summer we together. But it's just like it, 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 I loved it so much, man. I wouldn't trade nothing, right? Um it was just so many different things that went on. Our summer, our summertime play was lit up. There was no better runs in the summertime than Houston in the early 2000s. None. Wow. It, I mean, when I tell you the lineups, it was like 25 dudes. And I'm talking about Antonio McDice, Tim Duncan, David Robinson, Kevin Garnett, Sam Cassell, Nick Van Exel, Avery Johnson, uh, Steve Francis, James wow. Posey, uh, I mean, I'll, I'm, li I'm leaving people out. It was just like, it was insane. It was every morning, 10 o'clock. Oh. Everybody ready. Wow. Every morning. And, and it was like, you can't help but get better. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, it, it was, once I'm playing with all these guys, it, it was for me, my my confidence level just shot up to a point where it's like, I don't, I don't care who's in front of me. You better, you better your mother, your father, anybody. <laughs> it's gonna be a problem. Hey, were you nervous before? I mean, it's it's uh, it's interesting because I uh, it seems like one of the themes of your story is like at a lot of these levels or these milestones, you say you were nervous. You were nervous before the draft. You were nervous before this. You were nervous before that. You know, kind of in your head mentally. Where you tell me about before your first before you walked out of that tunnel, your first NBA game. Were you nervous? And tell me about that experience. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, so right, so is it my first game, right? First, my first game we play. I didn't play. We at we at the forum, dog. We at the forum, okay. Mm. If no people don't know that, that's where the Lakers used to play at. Lakers, yeah. So it was they last year playing there? 
So I mean, it's the Jack Nichols, it's the Eddie Murphys, it's this, it's the everybody's there, okay? The who's, who's, Robinson, yeah. Dennis Robbins, it's Robert Ory's over here, it's Shaquille O'Neal, Kobe Bryant's in his, you know, he is in his bag bag, right? Kobe's in his fourth, fifth year, you know, with his swag, uh, and I'm just sitting there on the bench, right? I'm wow. not even playing. I'm sitting on the bench. I'm just, I'm admiring everything that's going on. I'm not even on the bench. I'm there. I'm there's the bench, and then it was the floor. I was on the floor. Wow. So I'm just sitting around looking like, damn, like this is crazy. I'm I'm not even <laughs> thinking about getting in. in. I'm not even thinking about getting in. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, you tell me to come in. Nah, nah, not today. Not today. Like, I'm good. I swear I look at all this. Farrah Fawcett <laughs> over here. I'm looking. Like, yeah, yeah. I, like, I saw you on TV. Then I see how you doing. You know? <laughs> no, so so you the didn't next, take selfies. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, man. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm so I so I um uh, the next game, I don't play. So I'm cool. I'm a rookie. I'm like, okay, it's cool. Like, I'm, I'm good. a rookie. I'm good. Right? Next game, we playing Golden State. So playing Golden State, I'm at the end of the bench. And I'm out on the floor now. And I'm, at the, I'm sitting on the bench. Okay. And uh, uh, the, the guards got in foul trouble. So they get in foul trouble. And I'm like, I'm still sitting there. I'm, 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 I'm enamored. I'm just like looking around and shit. Like, oh, man, this is, I'm loving this, right? <laughs> so boom, coach like, yo, cat. So I, I I I hear him, but I don't hear him. <laughs> so they call me again. I'm like, I'm like, yo, he called my name. He's like, yeah. So I'm like, oh shit, I gotta get in the game. I swear to God, though, I'm like, oh shit. So I couldn't get my pants off. Yeah, well, right? I know you was like, yo, wait, what, what? He called my name. What do I do yeah, now? Yeah, <laughs> call my name, dog. So I'm like, I can't get my pants off. I'm like, God damn. It. Cat, you couldn't get your pants off. I couldn't get my pants off. It's button joints too. I couldn't get them off. So I'm like, yeah. ripping joints off. I get up to the front. Be like, get in the game. Damn, what took you so long? <laughs> so I get in the game. I get in the game, right? Wait, wait, wait. Pause, pause. Don't tell me you did a run straight from the coach into the game and get and check out. You checked in at the table. No, right? I checked in. I checked in. <laughs> I, I checked in. I walked. I walked. <laughs> I walked. Right. So boom, I get in the game. I get in the game. <sighs> so for for a minute, it was a little you know blurry for me. And then I played a great game. First game ever. Played a great game. Wow. First game ever, bro. This is how God is the favorite for me. This is how the universe is for me. First game ever, game winner. Top of the key, three-pointer. No way. Yeah, first game ever. Dang. Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley, my first game ever. Charles Barkley passed me the ball. Top of the key, three, we win. Dang, cat. That was my first game ever. After that, I was good. I had so about four game started. winners that year. I dunked on Sean Bradley. I dunked on I don't know how many cats I dunked, you dunked on. You dunked on Sean Bradley. Half court oh, shots. I, I was I was I was acting real fresh. I was acting real fresh. <laughs> you was acting like the fresh prince up in that. Uh, uh, Bel Air, I'm telling you. Yeah, it was Yo, crazy. That's crazy. So you go from not getting recruited, getting, you know, going to the NBA, and then can't get your pants off. You get in the game. And you hit a crazy. game winner, game winner, your first game. That's crazy, crazy, crazy man. I mean, listen, I can't even, I can't man. even write that one. I can't even write that one. That's insane, man. Right. So, so, so from there, I mean, your career is solid. Tell me what it was like playing with um, Stevie Franchise, man. Steve, Steve Francis, man. Tell me about him, man. He made me better. Steve was so aggressive. Steve was leading the league in offensive rebounds as a guard. Yeah, yeah. Like I was all guards. Mm -hmm. So what I did was because I played the three four in co in high school, mm -hmm. I went back to that mode of like somebody missed, crash the board. So when I'm playing yep. with Alvin Williams, Jason Lawson, Rasheed Wallace, like you can't get the ball a lot, so mm -hmm. you got to go get a miss. Yeah. So Steve put me back in that mode, and then it was like a kill kill kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But I think you know with Steve Steve that was my brother. He's still my brother to this day. Uh huh. And uh, you know what I'm saying like he was just. People don't really realize how good he was. Steve was incredible. And what we, Steve and I needed, we needed the Scotty Pippins, the veterans of the world, because it would have made us that much better because we were so talented. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, if we'd have had that, you know, like Kobe did with the, the, the Rick Foxes and the Brian Shaws and the Harpers and the Robert Ories and the, it, it just it it's very important to have a great coach, to great to have great teammates, mm -hmm. right? To veterans when you're young, yeah. Yeah. it's very important to have. And uh, you know, uh, Steve was just uh, Steve was his own self, man. He was just crazy. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Hey, I think um, I think now is the perfect time um, mm -hmm. for me to end this one. Mm -hmm. um, you know, because we we coming down on the hour, and I don't want to I don't want it to uh, cut 
and you know, interrupt any good conversation. Uh -huh. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end this one, save it, and then in like a minute or 30 seconds, a minute, just come back and rejoin. We're gonna pick up right from here. Okay. All right, so hey, listen, uh everybody, you're tuned in to the classic legendary stories of Catino Mobley. Um, so all you X amount of people, uh, come right back in like 30 seconds, uh, a minute. Um, we're gonna have a nice Q and A. So you guys start getting your questions ready for Cat. I'm gonna let um, Cat's gonna go back and forth with you guys, answer any question that y'all y'all have about his pro career, college, life lessons, anything like that. All right. So um, I'm I'm gonna end this and I'm gonna come right back, Cat. Okay. All right. And we back here, um, Legends Week uh, with Catino Mobley Part Two. Um, listen, th this is. I, I, I'm speechless um, regarding all the gems, man, and the stories that this cat is telling, man. Ridiculous, man. So y'all come back on, join, um, you know, share this live, share it with your friends, man. It's it's, uh, it's definitely going down, man. Yeah, hey, so, so picking up where we left off, um, before I ask my, ask my next question, is there anything else that you want to, um, you know, mention about the, you know, mention about the NBA? Any memories? Any, just, you know, things that you'll never forget? Things you appreciate about it, or what else? Well, no. Listen, man. Um, it's just too many different things, right? Uh, yeah. I just, I, I love being in a, in, in a, in a certain class of individuals uh, coming from North Philadelphia and being picked at, to play in a league that's, you know, top of the line. Right. And and having to not only just play, but like do my thing. Right. Dominate at times. So, you know, I've never would have expected this, you know, at a very young age. And uh, just to be privileged to, you know, would I would I listen, I, I probably wouldn't be no Hall of Famer. But a lot of my peers, I you know, Tracy McGrady's, J.R. Smith's, Joe Johnson's, so many different dudes. Jason Kidd's like, yo, one of your hardest people you ever guard. They say Katina Mobley. That make me feel good. Yeah, that made yeah. me feel good. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's said out their mouth. Mm -hmm. So for me, you know what I mean? Like, as long as my peers respect me and understand me, I don't really – it doesn't matter about what everybody else thinks, right? I know how good I was, and, you know, uh, and, and it was fun for me. I just I'm, – I'm happy and I'm privileged to, to know that, you know what I'm saying, like, you know, the, the, the Gary, Gary Paytons and, the, you know, George Gervins and the Dr. J's, they know me. You know what I'm saying? Like – that that's that's fun for me. That that makes it that that makes it that much better for me. No doubt, no doubt. Um, at, just out of curiosity, at what point? I mean, you go through your life, you know, you're, you're playing basketball, college, professional, you know, just and it becomes like, it, it, you know, like that. That's your lifestyle, you know, getting up, getting on planes, playing basketball, you know, all that kind of stuff. That's your lifestyle. That's all you know for for those amount of years. At what point does your um, professional career end? Like and, and and then how do you close that chapter of your life and kind of you know walk on to something else? I really don't close it, man, because I do the same thing now in business in the business world, right? Gotcha. Like I'm reading, I'm reading magazines, I'm I'm reading the computer, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, stuff on the computer. I'm I'm researching, you know, I'm up at four thirty every single morning, no matter where I'm at, you know, trying to figure out new things, trying to understand new things, and I've 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 put myself in a position where I'm well versed. And, uh, and you know, I'm, I'm still young at this, at this, in this world. So when it comes to the business world, so, you know, I'm, uh, there's some promises, but as long as you just like dedicate it. for me, you know, I love it. I love learning more stuff, right? You're going to lose money. I've lost money. I made money, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But it's just learning it and being able to teach my children and, and friends and help my friends, uh, when it comes to business is, is the best thing for me. Got you. And what, 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 so when you retired, at what point, I guess, uh, it, another thing that I was trying to say was, at what point did you know it was time for you to kind of retire from, from the NBA and then, you know, kind of how did that, you know, transition? Well, okay. So f before we get into the questions, you know, that was a little different, right? Because for me, uh, I didn't retire on my own. I was pushed out. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I was pushed out. So, you know, the Knicks froze me uh, when I was, uh, I was 32 years old. And I got traded to the Knicks. So they mm -hmm. froze me a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, it was a big – I went to sue the Knicks. You know, uh, you know the, uh, the the Clippers wanted me back and blah, blah, and all this other stuff that was going on. So, you know, uh, I wasn't finished playing. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha, uh, gotcha. I, I, I actually 
what's 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 crazy is I'm in the NBA history. In NBA history, I'm top twenty in minutes in NBA history. Wow. Eleven straight years. Yeah, I almost have forty minutes a game. Forty minutes a game. You know what I'm saying? For my career. You know what I mean? Not a lot of guys do that. You know what I'm saying? So wow. I was very durable. And it, it, it's a testament to myself because coaches kept me in the game. You know what I'm saying? Because, of course, I, I right. did things the right way how they wanted me to do it. So, you know, I, I, you know I, that's what I hold my hat on pretty much. No doubt, yep. no doubt. Um, when you think back um, over, your, over your journey, um, over your entire, you know, uh, NBA journey, college, and all that kind of stuff, what has what the game of basketball taught you? And what have you learned about yourself, about life? Uh, just, you know, a few things. I mean, basketball is the world, man. That's how it spins. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it's sports in general, right? When you're down, right, you keep fighting, right? If you love something, you 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 fight for it, right? So for me, uh, what basketball has given me is not only to be able to provide for my family, but it's given me a, a, a sense of confidence, right? A, a sense of uh, of, of uh, belonging, right? That you know, if you keep fighting you know, uh, to, to get what you want, you, you know, like, for, I don't know, man. It's just, it gives me, it, it's given me so much that it's, you can't really explain the feelings, right? Because for meeting people while you played or, you know, different things like that, it's just, I don't know. I don't know. It's just priceless. It's, it's a priceless situation, right? Where you get to give back, you get to meet new people. You get to, because after basketball, all the people that you met while you were playing, you know what I'm saying? Like, you become a businessman. You become a better father. You become a better uh, uh, son, brother, whatever. Like, you just, you, you're evolving as an individual, especially if you want to. And then, you know, mm -hmm. for me, I try to work as hard as I can to be the best person I can. Uh huh. No doubt. Um, uh, well, I, uh, just just let, just just to let the viewers know, I only have like two more questions, and then um, you know, I'm gonna let you guys start asking Cat some questions. So, um, so so you're playing with the you play in, involved with the big three, you know, Ice Cube's big three. Talk about that experience, man. What that's been like for you to just still like you know get out there and, big, and do your the thing, big man. three. The big three is the best, man. <laughs> the big three is the best. You know what I'm saying? Like, just to be able to get out get out there with my peers, the Joe Johnsons of the world, who's one of the best ISO dudes ever. Uh, and Steven Jackson's of the world, and you know, all these different guys. Mahmoud Raouf, oh my god, he's 50, mm. he's 51 years old, killing people. Yeah, it's just, and just being able to see these legends the Gary Paytons, the Rick Mahorns, the George Gervins, the you know, Dr. J's, and the Tiny Archibalds, and uh, Nancy Lieberman's of the world, Rick, Rick Berry's of the world to see all those different type of people, it, it's just, you know, that to me, that's like. Uh, being able to be competing every single week and really fighting is, you know, for me, it's, uh, you know, I miss that. I miss that. Mm -hmm. And not having that, you know, in my mid thirties, because, uh, you know, this, uh, um, um, misdiagnosis of a heart condition okay. that, uh, sidelined me, you know, yeah. it was, it was, you know, it, it filled that void that I was missing for a while. Yeah. Yeah. What, what's it like? Tell me what it's like, you know, behind the scenes when the cameras go off big three, you guys are backstage, you know, just, you know, it's like like a family reunion almost, you know, a class reunion. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What's that like, man? Well, check the office for me. See you in the office. See you in the office. Uh, yeah, for me, uh, it's just like normal, man. It's just like yeah. normal. Knowing, knowing where everybody – you know what? Being in the big three for me, right, because that's what we're talking about, right? Like for me, yeah, yeah. I, 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 seeing my guys progress, seeing my guys are fathers, seeing my guys that yeah. they look good, they still in shape. Yeah. You yeah. know, that for me, I love my brothers, man. I love, I love my brothers, man. I just I see any of us progressing, yeah. right? You doing your thing. Like I, to me, I love to see that. I love to see that positive thing, right? I love to see, you know, because it, we wasn't, especially as black men, brown men, we, they, they didn't, they didn't really put that out there that, you know, uh, in the media that we're great fathers. And when I see that every single day that I'm with these guys during the week and on weekends, we're traveling, they got their kids with them. And then that's their first priority for me. Yeah. Cause I'm a, I'm a, I'm a family guy, you know, and I love mine. So, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I just, I love to see that. I love to see guys in business world. I love to see, you know, all that dedication. That's just, that's, that makes me happy. 
No doubt. Last question, man. Um, then I'm gonna turn it over and let the people ask you some questions. Um, what advice do you have for the younger generation? Some young kids watching this that are in high school now, college now. You know, kids that are in the pros, trying to figure it out, trying to—they don't know how to manage their money. Just any advice that you have for some younger players? Drop some gems. Well, I mean, <clears throat> you don't really know how to manage your buzz. We gonna go to money. I'm not. Let's not go to money because right now. But as far as like whatever your passion is, right, like. There's, there's a certain amount of dedication that you have to have, mm -hmm. right? You you have to understand that there's going to be a lot of nights that you don't feel like doing it mm -hmm. to where you have to do it. So, mm -hmm. and I always say this to people all the time, you have to put yourself, at especially at a young age, in an uncomfortable position so many times mm -hmm. that when you start to progress, anything that's uncomfortable is comfortable. Yeah. Right. So that's, you know, down three with, with uh, minutes ago or up four. You know, you're not thinking about losing. You think about maintaining and making sure that you just stay in the course and uh, in life in general. Right. Like working out. If you're going to play basketball, I tell my sons and I tell people this all day long. You can't just work out for two hours. Like that's not mm. how this works. Right. Yep. You can get up at five, get up at five, do something, come back home, eat, sleep, yep. get back up, do some more, come back home, do it th like three, four times. Like that's what you feel like doing. Like if that's what you feel like doing, that should fall in love with the process, whatever it is. Yep. You want to be a businessman. You want to be a lawyer. You want to be a doctor. You want to be a ball player. Whatever. You want to be a rapper. You got to fall in love with the process. That's right. Right. Because the moment is just the moment. Uh -huh. Right. Because me picking up a ball at 13 and then my first game, I hit a game winner. That was just the moment. But yeah. to get to that moment, I had to do all these other things. Of course. You know what I'm saying? It took me 10 years just to get to that moment. Mm -hmm. Right? But we don't think about it like that. We have to really mm -hmm. fall in love with the process of life and, as, as, as in general because, right, from educating yourself. You don't – just because I tell you to do 20 push-ups, and this is this – is, I'm, I'm speaking an analogy. If I say do 20 push-ups and you do 20 – you should tell yourself, I'm going to do 20 more. Then I'm going to do 20 more. Then I'm going to do 20 more. If I tell you to read one book, read two or three books. Right? Uh -huh. Like, yeah. do more. Do more. Don't just do what they tell you to do. Do more. So you come, can become come back, better, come faster. Back, like, come yeah. back after the 20 like, Dad, I'm done. <laughs> yeah, like, no, nah, I'm cool. Okay, cool. So you're just doing what I want you to do. Uh -huh. like, do what you want to do. No doubt. No doubt. Fall in love with the process. That's classic, mm -hmm. man. So, mm -hmm. hey, um, I just want to say, man, I can't, I can't say it enough. I just want to say thank you so much, Cat, for yeah, I, know, yeah, yeah. I know, especially, I know, especially these days, you know, with all that's going on in the world, time is so precious and time is so valuable. So, thank you for giving, you know, giving us, my viewers, my audience, um, uh, you know, hour plus, you know, of your time tonight, man. Thank for you sure. so much for, for allowing sure. me to help to um, solidify your legacy um, through my movement. Um, thanks for, for thanks for all the classic stories and the gems, man. Um, thanks for the education. Um, just thank you, thank you so much for your contribution to for the sure, game. For sure, man. And um, I'm just so proud of you as a black man. Proud of you as a father. Proud of you as a professional. Um, proud that that you you fell in love with the process. Yes, sir. You know? Yes, sir. And, and, and you're just you know just living, um, you know li living the life of of someone that's an example of, of what you can do. If, mm -hmm. if you dedicate yourself, you know what I'm saying? Yes, so thank sir. you so much, Kat. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you, man. Everybody out there, for real, man. Fall in love, whatever it is, being a father, mother, job, whatever, man. If you fall in love with the process, you know, it's going to be some tough days. But before you know it, your kids will be healthy, educated, right? I mean, you, yourself, like, love yourself more. And when you love yourself more, right, you dedicate, you dedicate more to yourself opposed That's to, like, right. worrying about something else, right? Right. Yeah. All right, so hey, people, it's your time. Um, start typing your questions. Start asking Cat some questions. Um, right now. So Cat, it's it's a couple I wrote down from earlier. Um, mm -hmm. somebody wanted to know. They said, ask Cat about um when he came up. Uh, Fat Joe brought you up to the Dykeman. You remember that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Joe was my man. Joe, Joe would Joe would ride his tour bus to my around the country. He would come stay with me at my house because he, he was scared. Wow. Yes, Joe was scared of flying or flying on the plane. <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah. So me, Joe had a we had a bomb squad, man. We went up there. We used to we show off, we show out in Dykeman, you know. But uh, it was fun, man. That Dykeman was real fun. I love that. That's real fun. Um, uh, somebody said um earlier, I forget who who said it. They said tell them about the uh the strength shoes 
after your freshman year when you I guess came back <laughs> <with> the house. <laughs> yeah, that, yo, that's the you know who who started that? I think uh Bobby Hurley's father okay. kind of started that strip shoes where they kind of like uh, You mean the one with the platform and yeah, like the hill? Yeah, Bobby you Hurley's father used started. To be in the, the last, remember, remember the East Bay magazine? Yeah, they, they used to be the in. last page yep. ordered these with the little video with strip shoes. Yeah, them joints was classic back then. Yeah, yep, yep. I used to wear them joints my freshman year. Used to hurt my calves, man. It was crazy. Did they work now? Did they work? Yeah, they work. Yeah, some things work. <laughs> some things work for real. Toe raises, baby. Toe raises. No doubt. Uh, my man OC Chamberlain, um, OC, um, wanted to know a uh, little bit more detail about why they why they froze, why the Knicks froze you. Um, I, you know, I, what I think personally it was uh, more so a money play, and uh, in 2008, that's when they started to like empty their books. And uh, me being one of those ex, ex, um, expenditures, I guess you want to call them, uh, the, uh, you know, 2010, they were getting ready for it because it was the biggest free agency in the, ever, basically, with LeBron James and Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh. And it was a whole bunch of cats. Uh, Mary Stoudemire it was a whole bunch of them. So, you know, I think that's what that was. And, uh, you know, we were just one of those, you know, collateral damages. Got you, got you. Um, Super Jam Sports wants to know, just, you know, thanks. You gave you a lot of props. I wanted to know, do you still keep in contact with Steve and Yao? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, Yao's a lot of busy, very busy. Uh, I spoke to Yao about a month and a half ago. And uh, Steve, we talk on Instagram, and sometimes he'll, we'll call each other. But we're all so busy, man. It's just so crazy yeah. right at the moment. Yep. Yeah. Um, Mike D. Ames wants to know, um, any advice on moving up uh, – up the coaching and basketball podcast ranks, um, even though I didn't play college basketball. Yeah, man. Listen, there's a lot of coaches that are out there that, that are video coordinators. That was video coordinators that started like that. So it's not so much as where you start as where you finish. You know what I'm saying? So, again, I, I said that earlier in our, our conversation. I don't look at somebody else's grass. How, how can you fit in at the moment? If you're starting at the, in the mail room, Right, it's, it's it's in the mail room. Like you, yeah. at least you in the building. So like, like, you know, Pat, what, Pat whatever Croce, it is, take. Pat Croce was the trainer, right? Yeah, he became an owner. Became owner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, it's just it's just what it is, man. So you know, just wh wherever you think your pride can take you, that's where you go. No doubt. Um, it's a long name. I can't pronounce pronounce it. Yes, uh, something. Um, oh, are you returning to the big three once it resumes? Oh, for sure. I was mad because they didn't do it now, but. You know I mean, I, for me, I, I get another, I get some more time to rest. Yeah. So I'm not really worried about it, and I'm starting this new business, so it's all good. No doubt. Um, do you miss Rhode Island? No, no. I miss Houston. Gotcha, gotcha. I miss Houston. Um, uh, somebody wants to know Steve uh, Mucci, and you brought uh, the swag to Houston. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, did you feel it leaving Houston? Oh, did you feel it leaving Houston? Yeah, man. I, I mean, Houston kind of raised me as a young man. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. uh, But I wanted to branch out to see what I can do as just like a team leader and other mm -hmm. teams. And, uh, you know, I still go back to Houston, and Houston shows me major love. So uh, just like Rhode Island. Rhode Island shows me major love, and I love both. But, uh, you know, I miss Houston so much because I became, you know, a man in Houston. And uh, I have a lot of really good friends still there. Got you. Um what was your first reaction when you found out uh, that Nancy Lieberman would be your coach? I love it. She's smart as a whip. Uh, <laughs> she's uh, listen. She's she's you know she uh, she's uh, not only can she play, right? She's she's uh, super smart. Her IQ is super high, and uh, you know she's passionate and she loves her players. So you know for me it's a no brainer, right? Basketball mm -hmm. is no gender, right? It's you know, it's, it's, you can you can hoop, you can hoop. And one of my favorites ever to watch growing up from my hood is Dawn Staley. So, you know, I, I didn't really take it nothing, nothing else, right? You, you, your mother raised you with your father, but your mother raised you in our hood, right? So why not? Why can't a woman coach you? Exactly. <laughs> no exactly. Different. Exactly. Um, Tracy wants to know. Um, Tracy Ray wants to know. Um, how can we get more visibility and support to female youth in sports? You know, Kobe was, rest in peace, was working on a, a lot. Um, you know, there's something we have to really dive into. Uh, Tina Thompson being one of my closest friends, you know, that's something we got to really talk about because Kobe was trying to do that for his daughters uh, as far mm -hmm. as uh, building that up and building that awareness up even more. Um, yeah. I think it's getting there. It's getting there, right, because there's a lot of girls that are so good that are young right now that um, are getting the opportunity because the WNBA is exploding. 
Yeah. Um, for Dots, 2024 wants to know, how was it playing with Dream, with the Dream? I came to Dream. <laughs> Dream was cool, man. Dream was, you know, he, you know my, my guy, you know, sit, sitting, working on his, uh, you know, he would read the Quran. He would, you know, practice his handwriting and uh, Arabic. Uh, he would, you know, he always had the fresh, fresh linen on, you know, Super 180, you know, fabric. You know, and I'm talking about 8 o'clock in the morning. Like, it was just, Dream was impeccable. Uh, super smart. But, you know, he... He wasn't the dream from the 90s. He was different, right? He was more yeah. cool and reserved. He wanted to, you know what I'm saying? He was older. So it was just, you know, he used to call me and Steve uh, the gamblers because we would just go yeah. out there and just play street ball. <laughs> and <laughs> dream thought he was 1990s dream. Some, some, just give him the ball and move out the way. <laughs> you know, when you're uh, young like that, you weren't trying to hear that. It's like, Dream, listen, you move. You move out the way right now, please. Um, my man Derek Dewright wants to know, um, were you on the Rockets when Shaq and Barkley fought? Yeah, I jumped on his back. <laughs> yeah, I jumped on Shaq back after so after the game, right? I don't know why I did it. I'm coming from north, I guess. I you you punch my boy, I might jump on your back to calm that all down. You know, lucky Shaq ain't turn around and mop me. But uh <laughs> but uh I jumped on his back. So after the game, we walking through the tunnel and I got some of my boys from down the way with me, you know, in Houston. And Shaq's like, yo, you jumped in my back? I'm like, yeah, my, yeah. I mean, damn, you try to suck a punch my old head. What you want me to do? He's like, All right. So Shaq was like, Shaq was like, Shaq was like, okay, I, 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 I messed with you, young boy. Okay, I messed you. Right. But at first, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, damn, why did I do that? This man is seven feet tall, 350 pounds. He's going to whoop my ass. <laughs> yo, that's funny. Um, somebody wants a oh, good question. So, um, after the big three, um, Scale Boys wants to know after the big three, possibly, do you have any future in coaching at all? Um, I don't know. I don't know just yet, man. Uh, I'm dived into business. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Uh, if I can help in any way, I will. But uh, I, I, just, I want to be able to get. I, I, I you know, I'm, I, I'm very dedicated to being a businessman. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So for me, uh, I love this. This is fun this is for right now. You can always become a coach, right? Especially if you played the game. But uh, you can't always just jump in and be a businessman. So I think this is my opportunity to be able to soak in as much as I can till I get to that you know point where I'm like, okay, you know what? Everything's running smoothly. Let me go and do this. Got you, got you. Well, I got one more. I, I go to one more question um, mm -hmm. for the people. Then we'll close it out. Um, somebody wants mm -hmm. to know. Um, uh, Mike Mike Ames wants to know uh, who is the most underrated hooper um, that that people don't talk enough about, in your opinion. Or I guess you know from from back then now anything from what high school college pro um uh I don't know I, I'm not he, he he wasn't specific um I guess you know just just throughout your throughout your lifetime uh, whether it's you know college pro you know somebody that was really good that people didn't really talk that much about that probably deserve more props all the guys I knew was really good uh poof. yeah <laughs> I mean uh, I don't know I don't know who didn't get I mean a lot of us didn't I mean. I, I was getting missed on All Stars, and uh, you know what I'm saying like a lot of us. Like Flip Murray was at Seattle, and well, I think Ray was hurt, and Flip was getting dubs balling. every game. Yeah, balling and uh, you know, and yeah, all that. I mean, he was a problem. I mean, you know, I, I don't know what happened with that one, but you know, Flip was he's underrated, right? Uh, just yeah. Tyson Wheeler to me was underrated. I mean, he started a fast. He was a one man fast break. So, uh, but he was just shorter, you know. It's, it's, a, it's a lot of guys that are out there, man, that were just unbelievable uh, in their games. And it's like, uh, you know, I don't know. Alvin Williams, to me, was such a great scorer, but he didn't want to score. He wanted to play the right way. And that bothered yeah. the shit out of me because he could have averaged 20 and 10, you know. Yeah. And uh, he just he he just was trained and, and groomed to be played like a, a pure point guard. And I think yeah. when we when we came up, it was that transition where guards became really good scorers, you mm -hmm. know. And uh, yeah, uh, you know, so it was it was a few two different dudes. No doubt. Hey, well, that, that's pretty much it, Cat. Uh, I'm gonna let you go, man. Um, okay. There, you know, you you can close close this out, man. Is just anything else that you want to say, or any shout outs you want to give, or just anything you want to say before we close out? No, I'm cool, man. You just keep doing your thing. Y'all stay safe out there, man. Remember, fall in love with the process. That's all I can tell you. No doubt. One last thing, re reflection. Let, give me some feedback. What do you think about the whole Legends Week series, man? And then this whole thing we did here. I love it, man. I, I, you know, I, I love what you're doing. I, I love the questions that you ask. I love your passion behind it. 
and I love, uh, you know, just in anything in life, man, what we have to really understand is history, right? And, uh, you know, what happened before, what's happening now, and what we can do to make it better. So I, I think that that for me uh, is the reason why I came on is because, you know, there's a lot of cats that probably didn't know how I played or whatever it is because, the, you know, we weren't on YouTube and things like that, but you're bringing that to the forefront. And uh, if, if I can do anything to help these younger cats with a phone call or something like that, I'll definitely do that. But, you know, I love what you, the platform that you've set up for a lot of these cats out there because um, some of these things are unheard of, right, or, or, or don't get a um, that type of platform. So, you know, big ups to you, big ups to a lot of cats that came on. I've, I've watched a lot of them, you know, Thank and you. I've, I've, I've enjoyed it, man. I've, I've, I've truthfully enjoyed it. But, uh, yeah, man, just keep keep pushing and good luck with that. No doubt. God, God, God bless you. Thank you so much, Cat. God willing, I can uh, get to the, one of them big three games and see you do your thing, man. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I won't disappoint you. My man, my man. Appreciate you. And also, I'm going to um, afterwards upload this to my YouTube channel and my website, and I'll make sure okay. I send you the link when it's up. I appreciate you. All right, now. All right. Yep. My, my.